Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to replace the oil jet bolts on a Honda S2000. The oil jet bolts allow oil to pass from the engine block to the oil jets, which are responsible for squirting cool oil onto the underside of the pistons. The main reason people replace the oil jet bolts is because they were improved after the 2002 model year. The revised oil jet bolts included four holes instead of two which allowed more oil to flow through the oil jets. The second reason people replace oil jet bolts is because they can actually break. There is a spring inside the oil jet bolt that ensures that oil pressure must exceed 28 psi before the oil jet bolt allows oil to pass through. When the spring breaks, the oil jet bolt allows oil to pass through at all times, and this can lead to low idle oil pressure. I'm replacing my oil jet bolts for the latter reason, Anyway, let's get to it. The first thing you want to do is get the car on jack stands and remove the oil pan. If you need help doing that, I've got videos that will be linked down below. Be mindful that the engine will continue to drip oil endlessly while you're working underneath it, so be prepared for oil to hit your face and your arms and your torso. Once the oil pan is removed, you'll need to remove the OEM oil baffle plate. Use a 10mm socket with an extension to remove the 7 bolts securing the oil baffle plate to the bottom of the engine block. We'll start with the easy cylinders. Place a ratchet with a 19mm socket onto the crankshaft bolt and use it to rotate the crankshaft until you have direct access to the top of the oil jet bolt. I ended up positioning each cylinder so that it was at the top of the stroke but you can also position it so that it is at the bottom of its stroke. Once you have access to the oil jet bolt, use a ratchet with a 10 mm socket and an extension to break the bolt free. Loosen the bolt by hand and then lower the bolt along with the oil jet out of the engine block. With the oil jet and oil jet bolt removed, you'll see that there is a hole for the bolt as well as a shallow hole to the right of it to align the oil jet into place. Place the new oil jet bolt onto the 10 mm socket and place the oil jet on top of the oil jet bolt. Raise the oil jet bolt into place and attempt to thread it into the engine block as straight as possible. The tricky part about this is that the oil jet will want to swing around, so you'll want to make sure that you get the neck of the oil jet pointed towards the center of the cylinder. Continue to thread the oil jet bolt by hand. As you do this, the oil jet may want to move around. If that happens, you can try raising the oil jet into place or using something like a flathead screwdriver to rotate the oil jet so that the nub is aligned with a shallow hole in the engine block. You can reference the other cylinders to see what an aligned oil jet looks like. Continue threading the oil jet bolt by hand until you can no longer do so. Make sure that the oil jet is fully seated against the engine block and that the oil jet is aligned perfectly. Then use a quarter inch torque wrench to torque the oil jet bolts to 12 foot pounds. Unless you know what you're doing, I highly recommend using a quarter inch torque wrench because people commonly strip the threads in the engine block while using the wrong size torque wrench and fixing that is not fun. Rotate the crankshaft in order to get access to the oil jet bolt for cylinder 3. Once you have access to the oil jet bolt, the technique should be the same as cylinder 4. The only thing that was different about cylinder 3 for me was that the oil jet got snagged on the crankshaft which actually worked out nicely for me since they are tricky to align when installing the new oil jet bolt. Remember to torque the oil jet bolt to 12 foot pounds. Cylinder 2 is where things start to get a little bit trickier. Cylinder 2 is located directly above the oil pump pickup, so you will need to have the right length extension, otherwise you won't have space to use a ratchet. My extension was 6 inches long. Luckily, the extension that came with my quarter inch socket set worked perfectly, so I'll link that kit down below if you'd like to pick it up as well. Otherwise, the process should be the same as the previous cylinders. I spent quite a bit of time making sure that the oil jet was fully seated and perfectly aligned before torquing the oil jet bolt to 12 foot pounds. 
Cylinder 1 is by far the trickiest. Cylinder 1 is located directly above the entire oil pump, so you only have a couple square inches to even see the oil jet bolt. In order to get access to the oil jet bolts for Cylinder 1, you'll need to rotate the crankshaft 180 degrees again. Since the oil pump is in the way, you won't be able to just use a regular extension and a ratchet to access the bolt. The best way to access the oil jet bolt is using a universal joint and a 12 inch extension. Here comes the tricky part. You need to reinstall the oil jet bolt and align the oil jet with little to no visibility and only a few inches of room. It may feel impossible, but trust me, you can do it. What I found super helpful was to wrap the universal joint with some masking tape in order to limit some of its mobility and to prevent the socket from just falling over. Once you finally get the oil jet bolt threaded, the process should be the same as the other cylinders. You'll want to torque the oil jet bolt to 12 foot pounds. Begin reassembly by installing the OEM oil baffle plate. Use a 10 mm socket to install the 7 bolts, securing the OEM baffle plate to the bottom of the engine block. Torque the bolts to 8.7 foot pounds. Lastly, you'll want to reinstall the oil pan and get the car off jack stands and back onto the ground. If you need help doing that, I've got videos that will be linked down below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below for any DIY you'd like to see in the future.